Imagine dreaming of lighting up the entire planet using wireless electricity. That was Nikola Tesla. Born in 1856 in what is now Croatia, Tesla had a mind that operated far ahead of his time. The electric car company that bears his name is just a glimpse of his true impact. Behind the brand was a man who once fed pigeons in New York parks because he was broke and alone. Tesla's greatest achievement was the invention of alternating current, or AC. This is the very system that powers your home, your city, and your world. Before Tesla, Thomas Edison's direct current, or DC, was the standard. But DC was limited. It could not travel far or power large areas without losing energy. Tesla's AC system changed that. It made electricity efficient, safe, and far-reaching. His work helped power the first hydroelectric plant at Niagara Falls and laid the foundation for our modern power grid. But Tesla did not stop there. He created the Tesla coil, which is still used in technologies like radio and television. He dabbled in wireless communication, experimented with early versions of remote control, and even designed prototypes for devices that seemed like science fiction at the time. He believed in delivering free energy to the world, and his dreams went beyond invention. They were about transforming humanity. Yet, despite these contributions, Tesla didn't receive the credit he deserved. One major reason was his rivalry with Thomas Edison. Edison saw AC as a threat to his DC empire. To discredit Tesla, he launched a public smear campaign. He organized public demonstrations where animals were electrocuted with AC to show it was dangerous. The media sided with Edison, painting Tesla's system as unsafe. Edison became a hero in the eyes of the public. Tesla also struggled in business. He sold many of his patents for far less than they were worth. He once partnered with George Westinghouse, who helped finance his work, but that relationship ended when Westinghouse came under financial pressure. Tesla had no strong investors, no media team, and no interest in self-promotion. While others marketed themselves, Tesla remained focused on his ideas. He died in 1943, in a New York hotel room penniless and largely forgotten. Despite holding over 300 patents, Tesla was barely mentioned in the history books for years. His name faded from public memory, and the world moved on. But not forever. Today, Tesla is celebrated as a visionary. His name has become a symbol of brilliance and innovation. From high school science classes to electric cars, his legacy is everywhere. He is now recognized as one of the most important inventors in history. Tesla imagined a future that was bold, connected, and electric. And today, we are finally starting to catch up. His life reminds us that true genius is not always rewarded right away. Sometimes it takes the world a little longer to see the light. Tesla dreamed of lighting up the world, but another young mind was already imagining how people would see that world through moving images on a screen. Philo Farnsworth was just 14 years old when he had the idea that would shape the future. While plowing a potato field in rural Idaho, he noticed how each row was formed line by line. That simple observation planted the seed for a groundbreaking invention. What if images could be broken down and transmitted the same way, one line at a time? That thought became the foundation for electronic television. By age 21, Farnsworth had built the world's first fully operational electronic television system. His design used an electron beam to scan, transmit, and recreate images on a screen. It was a clean, silent process with no moving parts. Unlike the mechanical television models of the time, which relied on spinning discs and flickering results, Farnsworth's system worked smoothly. He had built a working television before most people even knew what the word meant. But despite inventing something that changed the world, Farnsworth never received the credit he deserved. The reason was simple. Power, money, and influence. While Farnsworth worked from a small lab with limited resources, a much larger force was preparing to challenge him. David Sarnoff, head of RCA, was determined to control the future of television. He backed an inventor named Vladimir Zworykin, whose earlier work was similar to Farnsworth's but far less developed. RCA argued that Zworykin had invented television first. The battle began. Farnsworth had patents, prototypes, and proof. RCA had deep pockets and an aggressive legal team. A long court battle followed. Farnsworth eventually won. In 1935, the US Patent Office officially credited him as the inventor of electronic television. But the damage had already been done. RCA delayed the adoption of Farnsworth's technology long enough for his patents to expire. When television finally exploded in popularity, RCA reaped the benefits, and Farnsworth was pushed into the shadows. The legal battle and lack of recognition took a toll on him. He continued to invent, contributing to radar and nuclear fusion research. 
but he never again reached the heights of his early promise. He watched the rise of the television industry from the sidelines. The very thing he created became a global phenomenon while he remained largely unrecognized. Farnsworth died in 1971, discouraged and nearly forgotten. But over time, his name began to resurface. In 1999, Time magazine named him one of the most influential people of the century. A statue of him now stands in the US Capitol. Still, ask the average person who invented television and chances are they will not say his name. His story is a reminder that having the right idea is not enough. Without protection, support, and strategic backing, even world-changing ideas can be buried. Farnsworth gave us television, a window to the world, yet for most of his life, the world barely looked back. He brought the future into our homes and history almost left him behind. If Farnsworth brought pictures to life, Jeffrey Hinton gave those pictures a mind of their own. But what happens when your own invention starts to think faster than you? If you've ever used a smartphone that finishes your sentences, a translator that turns your words into another language, or an AI that chats like a human, you're seeing the legacy of Jeffrey Hinton. Does humanity know what it's doing? No. Um, I think we're moving into a period when, for the first time ever, we may have things more intelligent than us. But unlike most tech pioneers who chase fame and fortune, Hinton spent decades working quietly on an idea the world once dismissed. And now that idea has changed everything. Back in the 1980s, when artificial intelligence was still a niche concept and many experts had given up on it, Hinton was convinced that neural networks could make machines learn like the human brain. He believed that instead of programming a machine with specific rules, you could train it by feeding it data and letting it learn on its own. The method he helped develop, backpropagation, became the foundation of modern deep learning. For years, no one listened. Funding was scarce. His work was often mocked. Colleagues in traditional computer science called it unrealistic, but Hinton pressed on, teaching, researching, and slowly refining the model. He wasn't chasing a product, he was chasing understanding. Then something shifted. In the early 2010s, deep learning started working, not just in theory, but in real world applications. Hinton's techniques were suddenly everywhere. They powered breakthroughs in speech recognition, image analysis, language translation, and more. Big tech companies started to pay attention. Google bought his startup for millions and brought him on board as a leading figure in their AI research division. Hinton's models became the backbone of systems that now power everything from voice assistants to autonomous cars. His work made ChatGPT, Google Translate, and facial recognition systems possible. Without him, the AI revolution might have arrived decades later, or not at all. But then came the twist. As AI systems grew smarter, so did Hinton's concerns. In 2023, he resigned from his role at Google so he could speak freely. His message was simple but alarming. We might be creating something we cannot control. He warned that AI could surpass human intelligence, spread misinformation, and reshape society in ways we are not prepared for. You believe they can understand? Yes. You believe they are intelligent? Yes. You believe these systems have experiences of their own and can make decisions based on those experiences? In the same sense as people do, yes. Are they conscious? I think they probably don't have much self-awareness at present. So in that sense, I don't think they're conscious. Will they have self-awareness, consciousness? Oh, yes. I yes. Think, oh, yes, I think they will in time. And so human beings will be the second most intelligent beings on the planet? Yeah. He feared it could be used for manipulation, surveillance, or even autonomous warfare. Unlike others in tech who brushed off the risks, Hinton chose honesty over comfort. He admitted he no longer knew how to stop what he helped to build. His decision to step down sent shockwaves through the industry. The man who helped invent the modern AI era had become its loudest critic. Now known as the godfather of AI, Hinton is both admired and feared. He gave the world tools that are changing medicine, education, and communication, but he also opened the door to unknown risks. And he has chosen to speak out while others stay silent. Hinton's story is a reminder that genius often walks a fine line between creation and caution. He built the future, but now warns of its dangers. He didn't just ask what machines could do, he asked what they should do. And he is still waiting for an answer. Genius isn't always about glory, 
Sometimes it's about planting seeds the world isn't ready for. Tesla, Farnsworth, and Hinton each saw the future before anyone else did. The question is, will we listen to today's visionaries or only celebrate them when it's too late?